so today we are going to be attempting a butterfly swirl and what I mean when I say attempting a butterfly swirl is I have been making soap for years and years and even to this day I cannot guarantee that every time I am going to get an actual butterfly from the butterfly swirl. So it is just kind of one of those things where, um, yeah, you just gotta pray to the soap gods and hope for the best, but we are gonna do this. I, um, a lot of times I end up with moths instead of butterflies, and then sometimes I end up with swirls that don't resemble any kind of butterfly or moth whatsoever it's just a jumble of swirls um but either way whether one achieves a butterfly swirl or not guaranteed you are going to end up with a beautiful soap regardless so we are going to attempt this I don't attempt it often because like I said, it's just one of those things where I either luck out or I don't. So let me first explain the butterfly swirl. So it is using a hanger tool to uh, sort of manipulate the soap in your mold to create what would look like a butterfly when you put two bars together it creates like the full butterfly so here are some hanger swirl tools you can also use an actual hanger i used a hanger for many many years before i upgraded to an actual tool which the tools are usually just a gear tie like this and i um, got this one from micah's and more or I got this one from Brambleberry, which is just um, 10 gauge electrical wire. So no bells and whistles, but they work really good. So as you can see, this one is quite a bit thinner and this one is thicker. So it just kind of is personal preference on the thickness. I think today I'm gonna go for the thicker hanger tool. I've never used this one before, so I wanna give it a go. But I wanted to show you the actual motion of the hanger tool um, without any soap in my mold because I have seen so many um, like videos on YouTube of fellow crafters doing absolutely beautiful butterfly swirls in their own soaps. And the one thing a lot of um, videos fail to show is the actual motions that they're doing them. Um, a lot of times they'll do it so quickly you have to like rewind a hundred times to see what they did. So I will show you real quick. There are two main ways that I have noticed um, a lot of soap makers, including myself, um, execute or hopefully execute the butterfly swirl in their soaps. So I actually uh, did a little artwork for you and I drew those for you. So the most common ways that I have seen fellow soap makers make the butterfly swirl in their soaps are first I've seen where they start and they bring the tool completely down to the bottom of the mold. Then they swirl up to the top and then pull it out where in the spot where they began. The other uh, popular way that I've seen is where they start on, and this is always the side closest to you, they start, they pull it over across the top of the soap, then they swirl down until they hit the bottom of the mold, and then they pull it up where they started I'm going to show you how I like to do it personally. So in this uh, mold that has no soap in it. So let me first, let me see if I can prop this up so you can see. Let me grab something okay. to prop this up. So let's pretend that there's soap in the mold here. So the way that I have successfully sometimes gotten a good butterfly um, out of my butterfly swirl is <clears throat> side closest to me, I bring the tool all the way down to the bottom of the mold then bring it over and then just swirl up and just as you swirl continue to move the tool up the mold then once you get to the top then you bring it across and pull it out where you started from 
So one last time, all the way down to the bottom, go over, begin to swirl, and as you swirl, move that tool up to the top. Once you get to the top, bring it back over and pull it out. So that is the motion that I am going to do, and um, I am also going to say a little prayer to the soap gods, and we'll see if we get a beautiful butterfly out of this butterfly swirl. And like I said, if we don't, it's still gonna be pretty. So don't beat yourself up if you can't get a perfect butterfly, because like I said, I've been soap making for years, and I don't get perfect butterflies. So occasionally I do. So let's see. So from here on out, I am just going to get everything ready. Today I am going to be using Nature's Fragrance Secret Wonderland Fragrance Oil. I love this fragrance oil. It is so pretty and it is so feminine and girly and lovely. It has top notes of strawberry and raspberries and red berries. Uh, middle notes of jasmine and um, gardenia and peach and base notes of vanilla, amber, musk, and sandalwood. And when I smell this fragrance oil, the main notes that I get, I get mostly, I get the vanilla and the amber base notes and I get those floral notes in there and just a little bit of like a, it's a fruity floral, but to me, it's more it's more floral than fruity. But I still get a hint of those fruits too. So it is just such a beautiful fragrance. I've soaked with it before, and it smells amazing in cold process. It lasts forever in cold process as well. It's just all around a fantastic fragrance. And um, it does have a little bit of vanillin in it. It has point five zero percent vanillin and in my experience though um the discoloration is so slight that mica colorants color uh, cover it up no problem so i don't worry about um the vanillin in this particular fragrance oil because i am able to mask that with um my mica colorants and it doesn't affect my micas and it doesn't darken them so no worries this is just an all-around beautiful fragrance and I cannot wait to get it in another batch of cold process soap because it is one of my favorites when it comes to just such a beautiful feminine pretty fragrance um, yeah with with those notes, the vanilla notes really come out and I really like that. And I like that it still has these gorgeous creamy vanilla notes, but it doesn't go so, so dark in your soap where you can't use tons of fun colors with it. So this is just an all around fantastic fragrance. So let's get started on attempting our butterfly swirl. So I'll catch you back when we're ready. All right, so everything has cooled down to room temperature, so let's make some soap. I got my soap making oils in this bucket right here. I've got my um, lye solution here, which is a blend of aloe juice, tussa silk, raw cane sugar, and a little bit of an herbal infusion that I got going on in there. So first things first, let's add our sodium lactate to our cooled lye solution this stirred in really well and then we'll add it to our base and oils. time to add the lye solution to our melted base oils and I'm just gonna give this a little stir by hand just to get it nice and incorporated before we stick blend it and then I'm gonna stick blend till just past emulsion as we need our batter to be relatively nice and fluid to be able to do a pretty butterfly swirl. We are at emulsion, so I'm gonna stop right here and get this split off for our colors. So the main color is going to be white and then I have accents of pink and kind of like a tealy blue and it's kind of like a coral pink. All right, so I've poured off some of my batter into these little cups here to make our accent colors. The first one we're going to do 
is called this mica called Love Song. And it's just a nice light pink color. I'll get this stirred into the first one. All right, our second accent color will be like, uh, it's like a teal blue type color. It's called Proud Peacock. And our last accent color is kind of like a coral pink color. It's called Summer Crush Mica. Let's get that mixed in. Accent colors are done. I'm gonna set these off to the side and get the main batch colored. For this, I am just using a mica called Winter White Mica. So we'll get that blended in. All right, so all my soap has been colored with the mica colorants. Now it's time to add our fragrance oil and then we'll begin our pour. And again, we are using um, Nature's Fragrance Secret Wonderland Fragrance Oil. It smells so beautiful and even better in cold process soap. It just really develops into such a beautiful fragrance and application. Incredible out of the bottle, but just so good in cold process soap. I absolutely love this fragrance. So I'm gonna get the fragrance oil in our soap portions now. Right, so the fragrance oil is added to all the soap now, so it's time to begin our pour and cross our fingers that we get a successful butterfly swirl today. Mold into view here. And what I'm gonna do, or rather what I like to do, is I like to prop the mold up when I'm doing the actual butterfly pour. Let me see if I can, there we go, this will work better. This is a better view. Prop it up when I do the accent colors. So that way it kind of keeps them all on one side. So first things first is I am going to pour in about a third of the white. So now I'm just going to pour with my accent colors using the pink and the turquoise or teal and this um, kind of coral orange type color. So first things first is I'm going to pour in my pink. And I'm just going to pour on one side. And pour in the teal. Thickening up a little bit on me. I think I soaked at warmer temperatures today, but that's all right. Working a little bit of this white again. really thick in the mouth. There we go. Oh. I think 
this was completely my bad because it was a little bit warmer than what I normally soap at. But even so, we're doing good. I'm just gonna pour in more of this coral. more of the white over. And finish up with my remaining colors. To butterfly. <clears throat> Just another and I'm gonna stick that hanger tool down all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna pull it over and I'm gonna swirl. Two, swirl, bringing it up and then bring it. Over. There we go. And just finish up with my remaining soap batter. So I did have a little bit of acceleration today, which is new because. Uh, last two times I soaked with this fragrance, I had absolutely none. So I really think that temp had a lot to do with this today. My house is a lot warmer. All right, so I'm just going to spread this around, get this nice and covered, and get that soap better nice and dispersed across the top, nice and level. So it just goes to show, too, that even if things move a little bit faster than what you're used to, it's totally okay. Just keep on going. Just keep on working. And also goes to show that everything is so recipe dependent and there are so many variables that will affect how a fragrance oil behaves from one batch to the next, even in the exact same recipe. So. I think it's going to actually work to our design advantage to keep those colors from getting muddled up too much together. I think it'll have nice definition between the colors, so and just a mild, mild acceleration. No problem at all. So I'm just going to give this a pat. I'm going to let this set up and then I'm going to pipe the top, but yeah, that's that's the butterfly. So I'll bring you back when this is ready to be um, Piped. All right, so it's time to make our soap frosting to pipe the top of our cold process soap here. I did turn on my air conditioning because I did have a little bit of mild acceleration on um, when I poured the main batch. So I've made it cooler in my home and I think we're not going to have any problems from here on out. But again, very, very mild acceleration. Nothing that had me um, scrambling to get it poured or anything like that. But here in my pot, I have the delicious, gorgeous, wonderful smelling um, Secret Wonderland fragrance oil as well as more of that love song mica mixed in with my main or my batch oils, not my main batch oils, but my soap frosting batch oils. And um, this is looking a little bit darker, darker pink than what I was kind of going for. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of this winter white mica as well. Let's get that blended in. Put that out a 
do it. Perfect. Okay, so now it's time to add our lye solution to what will be our soap frosting. My whole work area smells so pretty. Wish there was, really wish there was such a thing as smell vision because this is such a gorgeous fragrance. So let's get this going. I'm going to add my lye solution. blending and I haven't even reached a light tree so that just goes to show that yes this was very very uh, temperature dependent on why I had a little bit of mild acceleration with my main batch so yeah just uh, so many different variables but I've been stick blending for hmm, a good two minutes now and I'm still I'm not even at a light trace so cooling things down, turning on the AC in my house really, really helped. And now this fragrance oil is behaving a little too well. So I am going to keep on blending. All right, now we are at a light trace. So I am just going to let this sit and set up until it gets to pipeable consistency. And I'll bring you back when it's time to pipe the top of our maybe butterfly swirl. So, all right, I got my piping bag filled. It's time to get the top of this soap piped. to go with the pretty fragrance oil. So let's get some bling going on. So I'm just gonna accentuate the top with a little bit of this Mystic Blue Enviro Glitter. It's a white glitter, but it has like little flecks of blue. So I think that'll look very pretty on top. Alright, so I've done just a light dusting of this Mystic Blue Enviro Glitter. It's looking very pretty, it goes along with the theme. So I'm going to put some end beds on top. I've done, to go along with our butterfly theme, I've got these little butterflies going on. Those will go on one side, then we've got some dragonflies for the other side and in the middle. Just a, um, a white round spear. So let me get these embeds placed and I'll bring you back when it's looking pretty. All right, we are all done. I've got the embeds placed. I sprinkled the top with a little bit of um, Mystic Red Enviro Glitter just to as a little accent for the embeds themselves, but it's looking really, really pretty and it's smelling absolutely beautiful. So we've got our uh, little butterflies over here and our little dragonflies on the other side and everything is just looking sparkly and pretty and pink. So we will come back tomorrow to cut 
this up and see if we've got a butterfly swirl on the inside. Um, and like I said, if you do the butterfly swirl and you don't end up with a perfect butterfly, don't worry about it because no matter what, your creation is your creation and it's going to look beautiful. So we're not going to beat ourselves up too much if we don't have a perfect butterfly swirl in there, but I will bring you guys back tomorrow for the cut. For the time being, I'm just going to get this lightly insulated and we'll see you guys back for the cut. Well, we're back the next day to cut our soap and see if there's any kind of resemblance to a butterfly on the inside. I have no idea if I've achieved that, but we're about to find out. Um, but what I do know is that this loaf is looking really pretty on the outside and it smells, mm, it smells absolutely beautiful. This is such a wonderful fragrance that even if we did not achieve the perfect butterfly swirl, it's gonna be awesome because it smells awesome. So let's get that first end piece cut and we'll get into this loaf and see what we have going on on the inside. Well, there's an end piece, it's possible, I don't know, but you know what, it looks pretty, so let's keep going. All right, so let's get our first official cut. I think it's looking beautiful. It's gonna take, I'm gonna have to get into the actual middle of the loaf and see when I put two bars together if anything resembles a butterfly, but you know what? I'm really, really, really happy with how this turned out. It looks really beautiful. The colors in the middle are swirled so beautifully. We've got our piped top here with the butterfly and our dragonfly and some beautiful bling bling on top and the scent is just so pretty and so feminine and just girly and beautiful and smells amazing in the soap today so let's keep cutting and see what we have on the inside of this loaf <laughs> together and uh, yeah like I said I get a lot of moths so I'm not quite sure if we've got a full butterfly going on in there I see a little one in the very very center uh, let's see if I can hold these with both my hands just right here so yeah I would say that this was a semi-successful butterfly swirl I'll show you another cut and there's another cut so not precisely perfect but you know what i'm really really loving those swirls i am really really pleased with how this turned out it's not perfect but it's a work of art in and of itself and it is unique every piece is looking beautiful so i'm happy and it smells 
absolutely incredible. So it's this is a win-win in my book. So I think in the future I will come back and try some more swirling techniques that I have seen others do to try to get that perfect butterfly. But you know, for now I'm I'm really happy with how this turned out. So I'm gonna take it. But anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope that you were able to find maybe some inspiration in this video or um, just learn something new or just find something entertaining. But until next time, we will catch you all on the next video. Thank you so, so much. Bye, guys.